Hi friends. Welcome back to this React JS Advanced Concept series. In the last video, I have explained about use state hook in depth. In this video, I'm going to talk about use effect in depth. Let's start. First of all, what is use effect hook? It is a React hook used to perform side effects within functional components. You can ask me what are side effects? Side effects can include fetching data from APIs, setting up some subscriptions or timers, modifying DOM elements directly, or accessing browser APIs. Let me explain the need for use effect using a simple example. In this application, I have created an user state and I am fetching some user's data from this endpoint and storing that data in the user state. Here I am showing all the user names. This appears to be working fine. But let me show you the network tab. We can see it is keep on hitting the server. Let me put a console log and so you can understand it clearly. You can see this code is keep on getting executed. That is because when this component is loaded, this fetch data function will be called and so these users data will be fetched and it will be set in the user state. And so when the state is changed, the component will re-render. That will call this fetch data function again and so the user's data will be set again. This will be like a chain reaction and will loop continuously. This is not a good design. We can solve this using an use effect. Let me create an use effect. Use effect just accepts a function and then an optional dependency array. Inside the function, let me call the fetch data function and for now, let me keep the dependency array empty. Okay, let's see now. Now we can see this fetch data function is called only once. Even in the network tab, we can see only one request. This behaves like component dip mount in class components. And this is an optional dependency array. We can also ignore this. But if we are not giving this, again this will trigger an infinite loop. Okay. Now let me create one more state. And a button to update this state. Here in the dependency array, let me add this state as a dependency. So now when I load the page, this fetch data function will be called once. And then when I click this button and change this state as it is a dependency, this will call the function again. This behaves like component did update in class components. Sometimes by mistake, if we give this state also in the dependency, this will trigger the infinite loop again. So we need to be little careful while mentioning the dependencies. Hope you understood how this dependency array works. Okay, let me show you this. I have a parent component. Let me render that instead of the app component. In this parent component, I am having a state which is set to false. And based on that state, I am showing and hiding the child component. I am also having a button to change this state value. And so we can see initially the child component is not shown and when I click the button, the child component is getting rendered. And when I click again, it is getting destroyed. Okay. Now in child component, let me have a set interval and let me increase a count every one second. Let me also console log this. Now if I refresh the application, we can see the child component is not rented and so the count is not showing in the logs. Let me click this button. Now we can see the child component is rented and we can see the count is getting increased. Let me click this button again. Now we can see the child component is destroyed. But still the set interval is not cleared. If I click this multiple times, we can see multiple counts are showing up. This is a memory leak. So how can we clear the set interval? We can make use of the use effect. First, let me put this code inside an use effect. Now let me return a function here. Inside this function, let me have a console log. Now if I refresh the application and click the button, we can see the child component is rented and the count is showing in the logs. If I click this button again, we can see this function is called. That means we can make use this function to clear our interval. Like this. 
Now if I test, we can see when I click this button and click again, the child component is destroyed and also the set interval is also cleared. If I click again, it starts from the beginning again. This behaves like component will unmount in class component. Hope you understood. Ok, let's move to the next one. Here I have created few states. And I have few buttons to change these states. Also, I have an use effect function in which I am having all these states as my dependencies. So, if any of my dependencies is changed, this use effect will be triggered. I have used a console log to verify that. Ok, let's see the first one. On clicking this button, I am increasing this count. So, this count state will be changed and this will trigger the use effect. Let's see. Ok, for every click, the use effect is triggered. Good. Let's move to the next one. On clicking this button, I am changing this state from false to true. And so, this content will be shown and this use effect will be triggered. Let's see. Yes, this content is shown and this use effect is triggered once. If I click again, nothing will happen. Because this state is already true now. And so, no state change is happening. So, use effect will not be triggered further. Ok. Before moving to the next one, let me show this. Let me set this state also here. So, when I click this button, two states are getting changed. In this scenario, what will happen? How many times the use effect will be triggered? Here, two dependencies are getting changed. But the use effect will be invoked only once. Even though multiple state changes, the re-render will happen only once and so use effect will be triggered only once. Ok, let's move to this. When I click this button, I am adding a new country to this country's array and setting that state. But if I click this button, we can see the state change is not happening and the use effect is also not triggered. We have already seen this scenario in our previous video on use state. This is not the right way to add an element to an array because the array reference is not getting changed. That means this won't trigger the re-render. So instead of this, we can spread the countries inside a new array. This way, the re-render will happen and use effect will also get triggered. Here, if I click multiple times, the country will be added many times and the use effect will also be triggered that much time. Ok, let's move to this one. Here also, as we are changing a value in an object, this won't trigger the re-render. And so, use effect will also not be triggered. So, we can spread this inside a new object. Now we can see, when I click, the state change is happening and the use effect is also getting triggered. But one thing to note here is, when we change a boolean state from false to true and when we try to set it again, use effect is not triggered because the state change was not happened second time and thereafter. But here, even though the value is getting changed only one time, as we are spreading the object, every time a new object is getting set and so use effect will be triggered on every click. Ok, before we close, let me tell some of the best practices we need to follow while dealing with use effect. Always we need to include only the dependencies that directly affect the side effect. We should avoid including unnecessary dependencies as this can lead to unnecessary re-renders. It will be good to use multiple use effect hooks within a single component. This allows us to separate different concerns or side effects logically and independently manage how and when they should run. Using multiple use effect hooks helps make our component more modular and easier to maintain. Bundling multiple side effects into a single use effect hook can cause unintended side effects when one effect reruns unnecessarily. So always specify correct dependencies. Clean up side effects where necessary. Avoid performing side effects directly in the render function. And also understand the impacts caused by unnecessary re-renders or side effects. By understanding these common pitfalls, we can write cleaner and more efficient code while effectively managing side effects in React components. Hope you understood. Ok, that's all for today. I'll be back with another interesting concept soon. Thank you. Bye.